Espresso on SABC3. We are live on this Friday, baby. Now, listen up. Uh, Award winning novelist Richard Mason wrote his very first novel at the age of 21, which saw him gain great success. This novel sold millions of copies all around the world and was translated into 28 different languages. And he hopes to achieve the same sense of success with his latest book called Who Killed Pete Barol? And he's here this morning to tell us about this milestone in his life. Richard, good morning to you. Thanks for having me, Katlejo. It's great to be on the show. You look at the cover of that book and already at the bottom there, the editor of the Mail and Sun says, one of the most outstanding writers of our generation. How does that make you feel? Um, well, this book took me on a long journey, actually. So 10 years later, it makes you feel pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, starting off with uh, uh, the fact that, um, I actually want to explore the fact that you said you went to the Eastern Cape, you traveled around, you explored in order to really do your research on writing this book. Tell me why was that important to you? Yeah, so, I mean, I went to uh, the forest <laughs> of Guadana, which maybe you know no one enters now. Uh, and there's a myth that uh, there's a monster who lives in that forest whose yeah. glance turns you to stone. And I spoke to a 100-year-old uh, man, Mr. Mbika, and I said, if you know, I mean, if the monster's there, how do you know? And he said, when I was a boy in the 1920s, the white guys came and they built structures in the forest and they told us of the monster. And I wanted wow. to write a story about the man who invented the myth of the monster. And of course, it's full of closer characters. Uh, there's an Encina who's descended from the village's witch doctor, raised in the old ways. Another closer, uh, Luvo, who um, was raised by German missionaries, a devout Christian. And it's all set in 1914, just after the Natives Land Act of 1913. And as a white South African, apartheid kept us very apart. And I knew that in order to create closer characters, I'd have to go and live in the Eastern Cape, get involved in some way. So with the community of Mtwaku and a great band of people from around the country and around the world, we set up Project Luluto. Uh, if you go to richardmason.org, you can read about it. Um, and it's a place where adults can learn how to build green businesses that are mm. good for themselves, good for the environment. I spent a year living in a tent. <laughs> it was amazing and, uh, and pretty difficult at times. And, but I got right into you know, the situation in the Eastern Cape. Yeah. It, it sounds like you're somebody who's very invested in this kind of writing. When I say this kind of writing, I'm speaking about uh, one uh, a sense of writing that educates, that seeks to unite people through, you know, kind of telling the story in that way. Do you think? I that's think how, storytellers that's... can do that. Yeah. You know, I think it's by telling stories that you bring the past to life. And you know, what's great about writing about South Africa is that in any room in our country, people have such different perspectives, such different backgrounds. Yeah. Um, and Pete Barol, the central character, who's also a character in a book I wrote called History of a Pleasure Seeker. Um, you know, he's a European adventurer out on the make. So you've got this kind of European colonialist and his friendship with two very different Kosa men. Yeah, and I want to talk about that quickly, the, the history of a pleasure seeker, because this all forms part of an inter interconnected series, if you will. Uh, the Lighted Room. Yes. Uh, the history of a pleasure seeker and who killed Pete Barol. Can I just pick, pick up this book and read it on its own, or do I need to read them? No, you can read it on well? its own. You can read them in any order. Yeah. Um, and so they kind of fit together. Whatever your journey as a reader is yeah. uh, will be your own. And as a storyteller, what do you want your readers to take away from who killed Pete Barol? I guess that for my South African readers, it really makes an impact on me that it's just being published in South Africa. Um, I, want, I want people to try and imagine what it's like to belong to a different group. Hmm. For Klosas to imagine what it's like to be in Umlungu, for white people to see what it's like to be a black Klosa, for us all to understand the Natives Land Act yeah. when 14 15 of the country was basically taken away from black South Africans Absolutely. and the consequences which we're living with very yeah. much to this day. And of course, people can go to Richard, richardmason.org to find out more information. But you were saying that you're also working with, uh, or you've worked with Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu. Tell me about the work that you did there. So with the Drowning People, which became a bit of a success, I wanted to pay back in some way. So I set up the K. Mason Foundation in memory of my sister. And we've helped amazing kids get educations that their parents can't afford. Helped 256 so far. Wow. Um, and, you know, I was with some of them last night. In fact, some of them came and volunteered at Luluto. I've known them since they were 12. They're in their 20s now. Doctors, nurses, journalists, uh, great South African leaders. And in fact, if your viewers want to see more about the making of this book, yeah. uh, we made some great YouTube videos. Uh, if you search Who Killed Pete Barol on YouTube, yeah. uh, I think episode seven is going live today. Fantastic stuff. Well, may this book bring you much success. Thank and you, may man. it serve the greater good of the people as well. Thank you, appreciate that. Thank you so much. Richard Mason in our studio telling us about his latest book, Who Killed Pete Barol? And for more information, you can visit his website, richardmason.org. But there's still lots more to come on your feel-good breakfast show.